Welcome to the Forstronics YouTube channel. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the power needs or the power draw or the power profile of the NRF24 L01 transceiver. We'll look at its power profile in idle modes, transmit mode, receive mode. We'll also pair it with an Arduino Pro Mini to look at both of their power profiles together. Let's get started. So here we're looking at the idle mode, and, and on top I have a clip from the data sheet showing typical values of current draw while in idle mode, and then using a, a very accurate instrument to measure, well first to supply the power to the NRF24 module, and it can also measure the voltage and current. So I have the voltage set for 3.3 volts, and in the first picture on the left, I have the NRF24 in idle mode. I shouldn't say idle mode, I should say standby one mode. And you can see it's drawing close to the typical value of, of 26 microamps. It's drawing about 25.8 microamps. So pretty accurate according to the uh, data sheet. Now what does that mean to be in standby one mode? This is the mode you're in whenever you stop listening and you're not transmitting. So whenever you're not receiving or you're not transmitting data, this is the mode that you're sitting in. The more important one if you're trying to save power, let's say you have a, a battery power design and you want to save power, is the supply current in power down mode. Now in power down mode, you can't do anything. You can't transmit, you can't receive until you go back into power up mode. But the nice thing about power down mode is it draws very little current. So below one microamp, and you can see on my reading, we're looking at about 700 nanoamps. That's an incredibly small current. So you can kind of see where this can be used. Let's say you have a wireless sensor network, and I'll use this example throughout this presentation. If you only want to send data once every minute or once every 10 minutes, you can go into this power down mode when you're not transmitting data, and you'll use very little current. Even in standby one mode, you're using very little current, only 26 microamps. Now for standby two mode, that's a very rare mode, and, and I, you would rarely enter that, uh, so I'm not going to get into that. And the other mode, or the other talk, is about the startup of the oscillator, which is a very brief period. Let's take a close look at what happens when you're transmitting data. What is its power profile? So up top, I have a cutout from the data sheet, and what it's showing is what is the current consumption at different transmit power levels. So these are power levels for the PA, or the power amplifier. And the default one, and the highest power one, is 0 dBm, which means 1 milliwatt transmit power. And so that's going to draw the most current, 11.3 milliamps. And then from there we go down and it draws less current. Now, of course, whichever one you choose here is going to be related to the distance you can communicate with another node or another module. If you have devices that are close together, you can play with these lower power ranges and save further power. Now, how do you change these? Well, below I have a, a box showing, showing how to change the power amplifier level. And you can see the different settings, and they basically correspond to these, these power settings. Now, what I'm showing here is the same instrument, but I'm showing what, what's known as the oscilloscope view. So it's a time domain picture of the voltage and current. Now V1 is the voltage, and that's not doing much because it's just staying at a steady 3.3 volts. But the current down below is doing something. So when the current's flat, that's when we're in standby mode, standby one mode. So we're drawing about 26 microamps. Then when we want to transmit some data, you can see the marker M2. That pulse represents the power amplifier powering up to transmit data. And we can see that that's at about 12 milliamps, so a little higher than it, than it says, but that might be an average value for the entire pulse. But notice, the power draw is very brief in time, so it's, it's less than a millisecond because on the x-axis we're looking at divisions of, of two milliseconds, so less than a millisecond we have this current draw, and it's not even really that high of a current, which is, I guess, a relative term, but milliamps, not that high a current, it doesn't last too long. Here, we're looking at 10 pulses, I think about 10 pulses, 10 or 11 pulses. And on all this is, is the same transmit pulse we looked at, but we zoomed out a bit so they look a little smaller. But why is there 10 of them? This is an example of retries. If you're familiar with the, uh, the retry function, which you should be if you're familiar with this device, you can set the delay and the count for retry. So what I did is I set up a module and I turned off the receiver. 
So there's no receiver there, so this transmitter is going to try and transmit as many times as it can to try and get the receiver to get the data. And of course here it's not going to happen. Another thing to consider is the number of retries. The more retries you do, the more power you can use. If you have a situation where your receiver may not always be there or may not always be listening, you might want to turn those retries down and you'll save a little power. And, and the last note I'll make is, for those of you who got started with the module and you found out that you needed a capacitor at the input of the power supplies, these pulses, these transmit pulses are the reason. Because these transmit pulses are so sharp that sometimes they can't pull the power quick enough or the current quick enough from the power supply and those capacitors serve as an energy reservoir for powering or, or supplying the, the current, the fast current for these pulses. Okay, let's talk about the receive power profile. So another clip from the data sheet and what this is showing is that the receive power or the receive current is related to the bit rate. And that's, of course, the higher the bit rate, the more current it's gonna draw. Now the default one is one megabyte per second. And if we go down, I have the function that shows how to set the data rate or the bit rate. And what it basically does is use an enumeration. So you basically use these codes to change it. And the uh, RF241MBPS, of course, is the default one, and that's a zero. So you could put in that word or you can put in the zero, and that'll set it to one megabyte per second. If your data rate doesn't matter and you're concerned about power draw, go with the lowest power, or excuse me, go with the lowest data rate. Here's a reason why, because whenever you hit that start listening, which is the function that puts a module in receive mode, it's always drawing this amount of current, depending of course on the setting, but it never shuts off. It's not like transmit where there's just a pulse. This is constantly on. And this makes sense because typically if we think about wireless networks and we think that the NRF24 was you know, designed for something like that, the receiver where someone's going to gather the data and view the data is typically going to have a reliable or long-term power source, whereas the transmit modules are going to have the battery where, where power is more critical. So the receiver, once it's on, it's always on. And it's always drawing this, this milliamps worth of current. And here's a demonstration. Once again, this is a time domain view, and all I'm doing is putting a receive module in and out of listening. So I start listening, then I stop listening. I start listening, and I stop listening. And I do it every 200 milliseconds, so I just have a delay function for every 200 milliseconds. And you can see the current goes from the receive current amount down to the standby, because we're going to the standby one state. Okay, so we looked at idle mode, we looked at transmit mode, and we looked at receive mode. So to get, that gave you an idea of some of the settings you can play with to sort of optimize your power draw, or reduce your power draw with the NRF24. Once again, using the theme of a wireless network, what I did was I took an Arduino Pro Mini. I using, I'm using the sleep functions or the sleep capability and the low power capabilities of the Arduino. And what I'm doing here is showing the power profile of them both combined, or really the current profile. And what I'm trying to do is optimize for low current draw. So here, M2, I have my current very low. And what does this represent? Well, my Arduino Pro Mini is asleep. It's in sleep mode. And I also powered down my NRF24. So in this state between the Arduino and the NRF24, I'm drawing less than 90 microamps. Then, after a certain amount of time, I wake up the Arduino. I then power up the NRF24. I then transmit data. So we can think of this like a wireless sensor. I'm, take, I'm making a reading from my sensor, transmitting. I then may do some other work although this is probably going to be shorter in a real application. And then I go back to my sleep mode to conserve the battery power. You know, typically in this type of setup, you know, you might be sleeping for long periods of time. I did short periods of time just for demonstration sake, and your on period might be a lot shorter. You can actually see that my uh, transmitter here missed on, on one of the, uh, the transmits and had to do a retry. That's why there's two pulses here. Anyway, if, if you're concerned or you want to play with the Pro Minis or any Arduino sleep settings, check out my video series, Reducing Arduino's Power Consumption. Now, one disclaimer I'll mention here is, you know, in a, in a real wireless sensor setup, you're going to have the sensor drawing power. You may also have a voltage regulator or DC to DC converter, and that's going to draw some power. So those have to be taken into consider consideration also. This is just meant to be an example. Okay, that's it for the 
NRF24's power needs. If you liked it, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you're not already a subscriber. If you want to check out the, the sleep and the low power code that I just showed you from that profile, go to my blog. I didn't want to go over that code because it's, it's stuff that I've already covered in past tutorials, but it's there if you want to leverage it. And thank you for watching.